happy face. Oh my god, it does look like a happy face! All three of them Stop together. It. But if I do this, now it's going. <laughs> then you put it alone and it's like. And this one's like. Right? Can you tell it's the end of the day? <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm DIY Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer. Today is a really special episode and I'm gonna tell you why. The COVID-19 pandemic, which I know you all know about and are probably tired of listening to, but it affected so many small businesses that were non-essential worldwide. Many business owners had to make sacrifices and really hard choices just to keep their businesses operational. I've always tried to support locally when I can, but now more than ever, I've been trying to make a conscious effort to do that, whether that's in store or online. This episode, represents so much of my respect and admiration for not only just the business that I'm helping in this episode, but to all the amazing and strong entrepreneurs who have had to go through so much during this worldwide crisis. This one is for you. That's why I am both excited and thankful for the sponsor of this episode, Interact. We've teamed up so that we could give back a little bit of that support and love to local businesses. We are here to reveal the power of local baby of course I'm doing that the only way I know how and that's through a wicked cool DIY obviously before we jump in a gentle reminder to hit that subscribe button because guys we have such a cool DIY community growing here we got cool DIY projects custom creations and DIY home solutions and you don't want to miss out without further ado let's jump into this wicked cool DIY project editor roll the tape Boop. Welcome to Milton, a quaint little town in Southern Ontario, and it is here you will find the cutest plant shop in the world called Grow For It. Owned and founded by Lucia Fori. As you all know, I am a huge plant lover. As you can see around me, I always surround myself with plants. So walking into Lucy's store gave me all sorts of happy tingles. Is that a thing? Or like maybe it was my wallet getting all the happy tingles? <laughs> because I was not walking out of that store without buying a plant. And I did buy a plant. This is a Hoya plant. Isn't it adorable? I'm obsessed with it. I named it Lucy, obviously. Lucy opened her Grow For It shop in 2019, but like many non-essential business owners, she was forced to close her shop in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Lucy used her online Etsy and website to help keep her business alive during COVID, but recently opened her shop again, and with the help of Interact, it's been able to keep her purchases completely contactless and safe for both the business owner and for the customer. Her shop was just so beautiful and so robust. There were so many plants in this store. I couldn't believe it. When I first went to visit Lucy, she talked about how she loved the white walls in the space. She loved the clean lines, a modern look, but wanted to find a way to add color to her shop, especially because her ceilings were so dark. The entire space was full of green plant life, but missing that pop of color. Her personality was so bright and colorful, but she wasn't sure how to incorporate that into her store in a unique way. So she hoped to embrace DIY, something with a planty, artsy vibe to it. After we met, I got thinking about how can you add a artsy DIY vibe to a store that already had so much life bursting through. For me, the answer was screaming at me as soon as I walked into the door. Here was my plan. With so much plant life taking up majority of her floor space, I simply looked up for my solution. My plan is to hang multiple picture frames suspended from the ceiling and each frame will be full of color. Inside each frame will hang a plant on display like floating plant art. Then to add some additional interest, I'm going to create a few half circle shapes that will be stained in a similar wood tone as they're hanging Ladder, but I'll fill the center with jute burlap, painting it in similar color tones as the frames. As a last statement, Lucy's logo is a monstera leaf, and it happens to be her favorite plant, so I want to create two monstera leaves that are also going to hang in the space, because why not? 
To begin this DIY adventure, I was off to my local hardware store to pick up all the necessary hardware I was going to need to turn this hanging display to life. You know, it's funny, having Interact as the sponsor of this episode, it suddenly got me thinking about how we use Interact Flash to pay for items. Using Interact Flash, you know, to tap my card, it's always been a convenience thing. But now, with the pandemic, it's a safety thing. Contactless ways to pay is allowing customers to be safe and businesses to stay open, and I think that's kind of a beautiful thing. Heck, even thinking about it, being able to send money with Interact eTransfer has saved my business. I've been able to shop for all of my DIY items using online markets, paying for them in a safe way. I just like that I can support all of my local businesses while keeping them safe and myself. So I don't know, I just think technology is super cool and uh, I started doing that thing that I do, which is babbling, so let's move on. It was late in the day and I decided it was best to use the time to prep all the materials so we could assemble it all the next day. To make these frames, I was using a two by two lumber. Next was getting my steel bars cut to size. With the two by two frame, I probably didn't need to add this, but I wanted to be extra sure these frames were going to be secure. So by adding the metal bar that sat across the top of each frame, this would create extra stability for any heavy weighted plants that would put stress on the wood frame. I like to be safe, especially when it comes to making something for someone else. I mean, I'm safe for myself, but you know what I mean. Next, it was time to prep those half moons. To build this, I was using half inch plywood scraps that I had lying around and I was able to map out a good D shape and then I drew an additional line that was one and a half inch thick inside that would act as the frame thickness. I definitely didn't get them all cut that day. It was starting to get late. So I left it and set myself up for success the next day. So look all right with a little sanding. The next morning was a slow start. That heat was extreme. It was like 41 degrees Celsius. So I was getting the backyard set up so that Marty and I could work in the most shade that we possibly could create. And I actually set up a big shop van that really did help when you were feeling that heat. This is so relieving on a hot day. I think you're gonna need a hair tie. From there, I was able to get the rest of the D-rings cut and sanded. Time to head inside to get some AC action to cool down. The idea now is that the burlap is gonna get cut and sit on the inside of the frames and then they're gonna get painted the same colors that the frames are being painted. Cause they're fancy like that. And the colors that we had picked for this project were amazing. Look at that. This is called Unmellow Yellow, and then this one's called The Real Teal. Stop, did I pick something called The Real Teal? She bowled. We're just gonna really grow for it, as Lucy would say. Oh, my favorite, it's called With a Potion. It has to be said that way. And then this is California Coral. Oh, she's so beautiful. I actually think this one would look really good against the wood tone, so I'm gonna have to make a decision as to which colors I wanna go with. My gut says, Go coral, purple, and yellow for the D's. Now, my color inspiration actually came from the chair that Lucy had in her shop. We talked about how a lot of these colors were kind of her brand colors, but I said, if we're gonna go that route, I definitely want to pick similar colors, but something that was a little bit brighter, a little bit more lifted, so that it would really pop in the space. And then I was taking a bit of a gamble with the pink coral color, but I wanted a color that was going to complement and soften all of those bright, colors. So while Marnie got started on my burlap, I started staining the frames using Verthane stain color Early American. What would you yeah, say that this technique is? It's a, it's a stippling technique. The stippling? Yep. Or as some would put it, the dab. Cool, yep. That's when you dab. That's when you, no. That's when you dab, Marnie. All right. <laughs> One, two, three, dab. Marty, she with me. It's Gosh. gotten to that point in time where going outside feels like a real, like, like it track. feels like a lot of work and you're just like, okay, am I ready to go outside again? I'm making! 
Getting back to work, we got started on building all of the frames. Since the heat was so extreme, Marty and I wanted to make these in record time, so we created a great system. She was pre-drilling all the holes while I was screwing them together. Great team right there. We kind of felt like one of those NASCAR pit crews. We called ourselves the Screw and Glue Pit Crew Team. <laughs> I can't do the sound. <laughs> Nailed it! Actually, we screwed it. <laughs> now we need to get those metal bars on the tops of all of our frames. Yeah, dodging all that hardware was relatively very easy. We just lined up the steel bar, drilled all the necessary holes through the wood, and then attached all the hardware into place. We had two eye bolts that were put on the sides and a U-shaped hook that was secured in the middle. Oh my God, it's perfect. It's so perfect. Oh yeah. There they are, all of our frames. They're so beautiful. Let's go finish those half moons. Once our beautiful frames were built, it was finally time to come back to our dried burlap and put our little half moons together. The plan was to staple the burlap to the inside of the half moon shape, cut any excess burlap off, and then secure the second side of the moon shape using a brad nailer and a one inch brad nail. Easy as pie, my friends. Easy as pie. Is pie easy? Why do people say that? Maybe they don't say that. Maybe it's just I say that. <laughs> Look how cute we are. Oh. Ah, the cuteness. Stop it, cuteness. That's what we're saying. Just stop it, cuteness. I can't handle it. Oh, they were so pretty. Did they look like perfect D shapes? No, they had some bumps and bruises, but I kind of loved that look. I was embracing that organic vibe to it because I think that kind of went more to the theme, especially in a plant store like Lucy's. Last was adding in these small eye hooks by screwing them into the wood at the top. These frames were so light that they didn't need the crazy reinforcement that the other frames needed. These were more decorative, so I could use smaller eye hooks that were just screwed into place. Cute. On the last day, the goal was to create two monsters that were really going to be the cherry on the cake of this installation. I had two shapes that I drew out ahead of time that were going to act as my templates. Using scrap MDF I had in my garage, I simply traced these stencils onto the MDF and then carefully cut the shape out using a jigsaw. Now what I want to do is cut out some of the holes. Once the small holes were cut out of my leaves, I simply cleaned up the edges using sandpaper wrapped around a pen. This was super helpful and don't worry guys, the patent for this is pending. <laughs> I know it's a marker, but the joke didn't work the same, so whatever. Let's paint some monster eyes. I sourced a beautiful green color that was going to be the color on my monstera leaves. I love how vibrant and full of life this color was, just lovely. And then as the last part of the day, I moved on to the frames, which all received beautiful pops of color. I got a purple frame, a pink frame, a teal frame, and then there's a yellow, a teal, and a purple again. So Lucy, I hope you're ready because I'm coming at you with color. I will see you all in the space. It was finally installation day and the first task was to move all the plants out of the way so that I could get the install done without bumping or hurting any plants. I was gonna be drilling into concrete that day and it can get messy. So I had to get all of those plants out of the way and then once I had an open space, I did what any crazy person would do. I made it a dance party. I mean, when you have a big open space like that, there's only one thing you can do. Have a dance party. A solo dance party, obviously. <laughs> all right, I'm done. Once the dancing was done, I was mapping out where I wanted all the frames to go. I was using something called a plumb bum that would help me determine where each frame would hang properly from a point on the ceiling. This is a handy little tool, my friends, a handy little tool. 
Oh yeah, bringing out the big stuff. It was time to drill into some concrete. Yes, it was very messy, and so I actually ended up having Jeff hold a shop vac that was sucking up as much concrete as possible so that we would create as little amount of dust in the store as possible. After the hole was drilled, I got my anchors put in and my eye bolts screwed in place. All that was left was to determine what was the length in which each frame was going to hang, and then using aircraft cable, I clipped them in place. As each frame went up, you could see the vision coming to life and the color pop was already feeling so refreshing. I'm a visual person so I have to see it to figure out how was somebody when they walked in the store going to experience these art pieces. Everything is about first impressions. They had to hang the right way so that you could see them but staggered enough that it wasn't taking away from the hanging planters. And I had to visualize what it was going to look like with all the plants underneath. So it did take a little bit of imagination and the ability to step back and see the big picture. And of course I left the Monstera leaves for last. The first one got hung up over the archway that took you into the back of the shop. This was important to me because Lucy's logo was a Monstera plant. So I thought how special would it be to have this giant Monstera leaf hang over this beautiful arch that allowed you to walk through. It just felt like a moment, you know? It's something that draws your eye up and it's kind of special. And then the other one I hung right in the window, which was so cool because you could see it from the outside, which is something I love so much. Ah, it's so good. It was officially time to reveal to Lucy her new color-filled space. Are you ready to see a little more color in your green-filled space? I'm ready. Okay, on three. One, two, three. Oh, wow. I love it. Look at all the color, Danny. Wow, this is really pretty. I love the peach and the purple. Thank you. Wow, talk about finding a DIY artsy way to add a little color to a space already filled with so much life and love. I loved how all of these pieces added so much personality to the space. It just felt so much brighter, full of color. I like that you spaced it out in different sections so your eyes are drawn to different areas of the shop. I absolutely love this color. Yay! That's like one of my favorite colors. And you guys know how much I love a conversation piece and these pieces did just that. Oh, the Monstera! <laughs> I love that. I love that people can look through the window and these pieces can draw people in. And the organic feel of the half moons and how the light could pass through them. It didn't feel invasive. It just felt complimentary to the space. This is really cool. You captured the love of Monstera. I'm here for it. <laughs> Me too, man! Because these two areas here, I always thought it was a little unfinished. Yeah. So this kind of brings everything together. Yeah, it kind of it frames it nicely, it no pun intended. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Oh, and then that back area. What a cool space to be able to create a fun Instagram corner. Now customers can buy a plant, hang it above, and then snap a cool pic for their Instagram. It creates a moment in the back that adds a whole other element of a shopping experience. It's moments like this that make shops more memorable and more fun to come back to. A little bit. <laughs> I love that I could bring color and personality to a space for a person who was just full of so much color and personality already. Finally, we had a space that reflected the owner. Great. Well, he did it again. Yay! <laughs> And together with Interac, I was so happy I had the chance to support a local business so deserving of a little DIY upgrade. It's business owners like Lucy that demonstrate what the power of local can really do. Another DIY job 
well done. I'm very, very excited about this. This looks pretty. Yay! I'm awesome. glad you're happy. So yeah. I leave you to your shop. Thank you. You're wow. so welcome. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this wonderful DIY transformation. And once again, sending a big thank you to the sponsor of this episode, Interact, whose Interact technology and products have helped keep so many small businesses open during such a hard time. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know what is your favorite type of house plant in your home. Do you name your plants like me? Because I always find it's helpful to like keep them alive. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.